Here in Sunnyvale, we build components for our submarine force, and we're very proud of the role that we play in our nation's defense. But the nature of that work does require a lot of water and energy usage. We're one of the top users in the company, so we're continuously looking at ways to be more sustainable and, and reduce that utility usage. My name is Sarah Drain, and I'm the site manager in Sunnyvale, California. Over the past 10 years, we've reduced our water usage by about half. Uh, we participate in a robust recycling program where we're recycling about a million pounds of waste uh, every year. We are continuously looking for new and creative ways to, to be more sustainable, such as artificial grass, drought-resistant landscaping, we have a leak hotline. Um, we'll look at everything if it's feasible. Sustainability is a journey. We're learning along the way and sharing what we learned with others. Uh, we've got a long way to go, but we're making progress. And like safety, sustainability is everyone's responsibility. As a former U.S. Navy captain, I know how important it is to have the systems on the ship operate flawlessly. People's lives depend on it. I'm Stan Keeve, a Director of Strategy and Business Development. As a dad, as a uh, educator, as a mentor to young people, it's very important to ensure that we take care of the planet for future generations. In addition to our own practices, many of the systems and capabilities we deliver to the Navy and the Department of Defense are helping them achieve their sustainability goals. Navigation systems, power systems, and multifunction sensors are all helping our customer operate more efficiently and sustainably. I'm proud to be continuing the mission here at Northrop Grumman, and I'm very proud of our efforts to do things in a way that respects the environment. Over the years, Northrop Grumman has developed a great relationship with the uh, Chesapeake Bay Foundation. My name is Andy Gray. I'm a robotics engineer at Northrop Grumman. Now, they came to us with, with uh, several problems. One of the problems is how can we use acoustics to record the health of a reef, but also how can we use those acoustics to attract oyster larvae? Several journal papers out there uh, showing that uh, the sounds of a healthy reef actually attract oyster larvae. So the thought is if we can make really good recordings of these healthy reefs and then replay them on reefs that may not be healthy or, or don't even exist, we may be able to attract oyster larvae in that area and help grow that field. For this project, we brought in quite a few interns to help us build some of the systems. So one of the systems we're looking at is a low-cost uh, buoy system with solar panels that's able to play the sounds of a healthy reef indefinitely. What the interns are developing is not just a buoy system, uh, they're going to have a direct impact on the environment around us. This is something that, that matters.